Hello friends, a very warm welcome to the Vicarage study for this, the next of our midweek musings. I hope this finds you well and I hope these musings uh, offer you some alternative perspective, something different to think about uh, in the midst of your weeks. This week uh, I want us to think uh, a little bit with the help of uh, an Anglican mystic who the church remembered on Monday. Uh, Evelyn Underhill. Underhill died in, I think, 1941, and she was a great figure within the Anglican tradition, connecting us with that great line of Christian mystics. Uh, she, I thought of her recently because I was sorting out some uh, information to go in one of my scrapbooks, and I was reminded of time I'd spent in Pleshy, uh, Pleshy Retreat House near Chelmsford in Essex, which was where Evelyn uh, Underhill was based in many ways. She led many retreats there, and it's a house associated with her. And as I thought of her on Monday, I looked up a book that I'd had for some years, which was entitled Lent with Evelyn Underhill. It's one of those books that gives you a reading uh, for the day, and came across one on forgiveness which I thought I'd share with you today, not least because it seems particularly appropriate um, given the wider context uh, of what's happening in the world at this time. So let me share Underhill's words. They were written at a time, so in a way the language reflects that, but I hope you'll find something in them that might speak to you at this moment. It's from a book she wrote called Abba. There is no lesson Christ loves better to drive home than this disconcerting fact of our common human fragility, which, when we have truly grasped it, kills resentment and puts indulgent pity in its place. Let the man, the group, the nation that is without sin cast the first stone. God's forgiveness means the compassionate recognition of the weakness and instability of man. How often we cannot help it, how truly there is in us a root and ground of sin, an implicit rebellion against the holy, a tendency away from love and peace. And this requires of us the constant compassionate recognition of our fellow creatures' instability and weakness, of the fact that they too cannot help it. If the Christian penitent dares to ask that his many departures from the Christian norm, his impatience, gloom, self-occupation, unloving prejudices, reckless tongue, feverish desires, with all the damage they have caused to Christ's body, are indeed to be set aside, because in spite of it all, he longs for God and eternal life. Then he too must set aside and forgive all that impatience, selfishness, bitter and foolish speech, sudden yieldings to base impulse in others, have caused him to endure. Hardness is the one impossible thing. Harshness to others in those who ask and need the mercy of God sets up a conflict at the very heart of personality and shuts the door upon grace. And that which is true of the individual soul is also true of the community. The penitent nation seeking the path of life must also conform to the law of charity. This principle applied in its fullness makes a demand on our generosity which only a purified and self-oblivious love can hope to meet. For every soul that appeals for God's forgiveness is required to move over to his side and share the compassionate understanding, the unmeasured pity with which he looks on human frailty and sin. So difficult is this to the proud and assertive creature that it comes very near the end of our education in prayer. Indeed, the Christian doctrine of forgiveness is so drastic and so difficult where there is a real and deep injury to forgive that only those living in the Spirit, in union with the cross, can dare to base their claim on it. So some words from Le Evelyn Underhill there, which I hope might be helpful. Do listen to them again, perhaps pause uh, as and when uh, it feels appropriate or as you're lingering on a phrase and I wanted to end with a prayer that she'd written from this lovely book Love's Redeeming Work um, the Anglican Quest for Holiness which uh, seemed an appropriate place to end this musing this week 
Let us pray. O blessed Jesus Christ, who didst bid all who carry heavy burdens to come to thee, refresh us with thy presence and thy power. Quiet our understandings and give ease to our hearts by bringing us close to things infinite and eternal. Open to us the mind of God, that in his light we may see light, and crown thy choice of us to be thy servants by making us springs of strength and joy to all whom we serve. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to be here. It's uh, good to have shared this time with you. I look forward to seeing you soon, and do be in touch if there's anything I or we can do to help sustain you through this time. God bless you and see you soon.